morning, everyone. It's good to see you here. And I'd like to start by reading a scripture that we're all familiar with, but I'm reading it from the message. I just thought it was a really interesting way to put some of these things about love. So it's 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak with human eloquence, eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaky, creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with everything, trusts God always, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be cancelled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is love. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's very plain that our love for you really is important and that we do what we do out of love. Give us a good service today. May your spirit dwell with us and work through the songs and the words that are spoken. In Jesus' name, amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Let's stand and sing. Sweet to trust in 
Okay. <laughs> uh, lots of announcements for you today, and um, I needed to say there are three things that Nazarenes love to do. <laughs> we love to pray, we love to talk, we love to care for others, and we love to eat. And so we're celebrating today. We made our mustard seed goal of $30,000, so we have saved $10,000 from the, for the uh, budget this year already. To celebrate that, we're going to eat. Uh, we're going to have a cake and coffee just after the service, if you could stay around for a little while. Hopefully it won't uh, Im I impact your, your hunger for your meal too badly. Uh, but please stay and enjoy that. Also related to after service, the board will have a short board meeting, um, probably in the TLC room. Is that a good place to go? Uh, this is something that needs to be decided there as well. There's a whole book of stuff in the bulletin, and I'd like to go over some of it because it's quite important. Pastor Mark and Kathy are on vacation this week, as well as going to a prayer retreat uh, for the pastors in Canmore. This is called Suffering for Jesus. <laughs> and uh, if you can keep them in prayer, usually when it goes, they go, it snows. I don't think it's going to snow this year, so they could actually enjoy the nice weather as well. Um, let me see, carry on here. Um, the uh, Pray and Go Bible study has ended, and it will be canceled for two weeks while we order new material. And we'll order material based on prayer again. It'll be uh, video-based, but you can come and see it in purpose, or it can also be online. Uh, I'm quite excited about that because you know that my heart is in prayer right now. I seem to be convicted to pray, so... Uh, it won't be on this week or the next week, and then we'll be starting up again for a couple of Thursdays at least before Christmas time. Um, da, da, um, November 16th, uh, there is a sign-up sheet at the back. We are having another uh, day of service at the soup kitchen. And I think, if, do you have the times down here, Linda? It's usually uh, from about... Yeah, if they meet here at 10 o'clock. 
at 10 o'clock? Okay, so we'll walk over from there. That way we know our, car, our, place, our cars will be safe. And it usually goes to about 2, 2.30 till we get everything cleaned up. So if you can come, just go ahead and sign up the sheet, and we look forward to another great time of serving others through that as well. Um, Good Samaritan gift boxes are out. Sometimes we miss this completely because they'd like the boxes by just right after Remembrance Day. So there are some boxes out there if you want to buy a gift or buy a box and fill it up with things for children. I think there's a brochure that gives you the ages and what you can give and what you cannot give as well. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that. Uh, if you're really looking, Linda, I think somewhere in the back room, if you can get to them, there are extra boxes, but. I'm not too sure even where anymore. Otherwise, I think you can get boxes also from the dollar store as well. Um, another thing to look forward to is uh, the Manswell family are coming. These are like our resident missionaries. Originally, uh, Barbara was from High River where her mom and dad pastored. And they will be here the end of November. It's a Sunday evening. And we will have a potluck tied to that. So we would encourage you to plan to come to that as well. I think those are the main um, announcements, but Pastor Mark has a couple of things to talk about. Good morning. Uh, just wanted to let you know, as, as Jackie did announce, we just completed the Pray and Go material, although if you wanted to participate in that, I do have those videos on memory sticks uh, that you can watch. Um, I am looking for pray, uh, prayer walker warriors uh, that are willing to sign up with those of us that have taken the course. Uh, if we have enough pairs, uh, you will only have to go out and pray for this neighborhood once a month. And so uh, I don't have a sign-up sheet this week, but I just wanted to communicate the need. Uh, I will bring that back up in a couple of weeks. Um, also... Uh, with that, I need some help. Uh, if someone, uh, can you put the map up for me, Spence? Uh, that's our neighborhood. Uh, so uh, basically, we're going to pray for the homes between 3rd Ave and 9th Ave and Stafford Drive and 13th Street. And so that's the neighborhood that we are going to cover. And with that, we are going to go in pairs, and we are going to put a door hanger on their doors that says, we prayed for you today. Uh, if you have any concerns and you would like us to pray for you, there's going to be an email there. They're going to have the church address. They're going to have our email and our web website. Um, this is a, a really easy way to go out and share Jesus with our community. And so we're, our, our hope is with that, to, to cover all those houses, it's not like we're going to do it in one day, all those houses to let them know that Bridge Community Church has prayed for them. And we have no idea what the results are going to come from that. And so I'm excited to par for us to participate in that. And so if you want to participate, I need some help. I do need a helper uh, to help me with the, the map uh, to keep us keep us on track with what, how many houses we've covered. Uh, I have someone who's already going to deal with prayer requests if they come in. And of course, we need, we need hands and feet that are willing to go out and, and stop in front of a house and pray for it and, and put the cards out. And so if you're interested, please, please let me know. And I'm, I'm already assuming that those of you that have taken the course, that you're going to be, you're going to be my walkers. You're going to, we're going to go out and walk together and do this. And so so uh, hoping uh, that we are going to get those door, we need the door hangers, so we're going to hopefully get those ordered this week. And so we will keep you up to date on when the first date is that we're going to go out and pray. All right. Thank you. For this next part, if you'd like to stand, it's up to you where you can sit. Your choice. Yes, 
I call out 
so grateful that we have that everlasting hope that what you've given to us through through Jesus uh, through his life through his death on the cross through his resurrection um, brings life to our burdened souls and we're so grateful to God that we can unburden ourselves to you, that we can cast our cares into your hands, knowing that you will not only receive them from us, but that you'll be our strength, our helper in our times of need. Thank you, God, too, for uh, your provisions Thank you, Lord, for your generous spirit and, uh, Lord, for, uh, <clears throat> for uh, the generosity, the spirit of generosity that uh, exists in your people. Thank you for helping us, God, in meeting that need of uh, that $30,000 loan. Um, I know, God, it could not be accomplished without your... Uh, without your hand upon us, without you moving in us and through us and moving us to give. Uh, Lord, we, I want to thank you for our neighborhood and, and where you have planted us here as the Bridge Community Church. Uh, I pray for the homes around us this morning and ask that God, you will bless these homes, these families uh, provide for their needs, God, and, and uh, just continue, Holy Spirit, to be working in and through uh, this neighborhood. Thank you for the businesses that, that we are neighbored to here as well, and I ask, God, that you will uh, strengthen those workers that serve uh, here alongside of us. Thank you, too, for our children, and I pray for them. I ask, God, your blessing upon them as they, uh, as they go to school, as they uh, hang out with friends, as they um, are maybe involved in sports or other extracurricular activities. We ask, God, that you would, you would use them as your witnesses uh, to be Jesus to those that surround them. And I pray to God that you would bring children, youth, young adults uh, into our sphere of influence as well. That we could share Jesus with the younger generations and see the younger generations um, 
serve with us. I continue to pray, dear God, for overseas. And I know uh, there is much happening that, that's beyond our understanding. And I, I think especially of the rhetoric that's surrounding the war between Ukraine and Russia. Um, God, uh, there's a lot of fear-mongering going on right now. A lot of threats to nuclear war. And we pray, Father, that you would bring your spirit of peace into this, into this part of the world. We pray, dear God, that you would work in the hearts of those leaders, that you, God, would bring an end to this conflict. And I thank God of those that are working on your behalf that have been called to that part of the world. I pray you would continue to give them courage and strength and wisdom as they serve uh, your people. And I thank you for our missionaries in general. I, I am grateful, God, that there are still men and women that accept the call to serve overseas in different capacities. And I pray that you will just continue, Lord God, to, to be building up your church. I thank you for our church family this morning. And Lord, there, there are very likely some needs uh, within our family that, that only you see, only you know. And so I pray, Father, that you will continue to respond to those needs, that you will bring your strength and your solutions to bear. I think of um, Brock and his family this morning as they say goodbye uh, to a dearly loved aunt, mother, um, grandmother, likely, uh, wife, I pray for the Herring family. I pray for Nolan and asking God that you will comfort him as he uh, now has to live without his darling wife by his side. Be there, be their strength. Be there for this family right now, I pray. Comfort them and, and uh, may your healing grace go before them as they, as they grieve this loss. And thank you, God, that we can be together, that we can comfort and be a strength to one another as brothers and sisters. I am grateful, God, for the body of Christ. I'm grateful, God, that we have someone we can lean on, that we can go to for support, that we can encourage one another, laugh together, and spend time together. So, Lord, I, I, I pray your blessing now upon our time in the word. I ask God that you will just continue to be with us here this morning in our worship. May you be glorified here in what takes place uh, this morning. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yes, if you're, if you know the Herring family, um, They're uh, grieving loss right now. Nolan's wife passed away, and of course, it's Brock's great aunt, and so that's where he is. He's with his family right now, so I believe the, the funeral is tomorrow, and so if you, if you think of them, pray for them tomorrow as they'll be, it'll be a hard day, so um, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask that you turn with me to the book of Romans this morning going to be looking at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, reading verses 3 to 7. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members 
do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If, it's incur- if, it, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. 25-year-old girl canceled her engagement. She, she tearfully told her mother what had happened, and she said, I can't marry him. He's not really Christian. I've discovered he, doesn't, he really doesn't believe in hell. And the determined mother said, go ahead and marry him anyway. We'll teach him to believe in hell. Um, one of the greatest legends in teaching was a 17th century Czech man named Jan Kamensky. He's sometimes called Kamenius. And he promoted the idea of universal education for all. Came up with the idea of illustrated tes- textbooks and interlinear books with columns in two languages, and of course, a host of other teaching innovations. He was also a man of God and a leader among the Bohemian Brethren, the the group that sent out the first modern missionaries. Well, we're continuing to look this morning at how we achieve the Bridges mission to connect people to God and each other. We've looked at living and giving, and now we are moving on to talk about teaching this morning. Our passage mentions teaching explicitly once. But I believe there is more teaching going on in this passage than may be first realized. And teaching is defined as explaining to someone how to do something. And I I think what's listed here in this passage is all a form of teaching. Now, we as disciples here at the bridge, we, we teach one another by participating in either our small group, or or Sunday school class. But we can learn more from one another than just uh, through the Word of God. Uh, One of the most prominent ways we can teach is through the use of our gifts. Uh, So I want to just look briefly at each of these gifts and see how they are used for teaching. Uh, First, uh, number one, prophecy. Prophecy. Now, the meaning of that word, I think, has been lost within our modern context. Uh, Many hear that word and they think of someone telling the future like uh, Nostradamus. But James 4 says, Why, you you (laughs) you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes, James 4.14. But a prophet in the biblical context is different. A prophet is one who forth tells. They forth tell. Now, there may be something mentioned about the future, but it's really about making known a message from God. We even see it as giving a message from God's word. Uh, The Barclay Commentary on Romans says it's someone who can declare the Christian message with the authority of someone who knows. So in our context, we look at a prophet as a preacher, someone called to proclaim the word of God. God was speaking to the Israelites as they were heading to the promised land when he said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth. He will teach them everything I command him. Deuteronomy 18, 18. Now through prophecy, one can teach what God is saying to his people through a a particular passage of scripture. This typically happens in a larger context. Uh, In Acts 15, the church leaders gathered in Jerusalem to help lay out doctrinal teaching for the Gentiles. And they sent out a letter to the rest of the church. 
Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the believers. Acts 15, 32. The second one is service. Now, the gift of service may not be as prominent a gift as someone who preaches to a crowd, but I believe it's no less powerful in the lessons serving teaches. Serving is about being hands-on with people. Serving is about getting dirty and helping those in need. Through, through serving others, we teach that all have value and are deserving of compassion. Through serving, we teach others about God's love. John William Gardner once said, when people are serving, life is no longer meaningless. A wealthy American traveler visited a, a hospital in Southeast Asia, and he walked in just as a young missionary nurse was cleaning the sores on a, a sick, dirty, elderly man who they had found lying in a gutter. And the rich man said to the nurse, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. And she answered quietly and firmly, saying, neither would I. Jesus was trying to teach a lesson uh, about discipleship to his disciples when he said, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. In serving, we teach others the importance of giving ourselves away. Now, number three is, is teaching. Now, now, typically, the teacher would take the prophet's message the, that had been shared and go into more depth, explaining in greater detail what the message was about. Proclamation is important, but if we don't understand, we won't grow deeper in our faith. That's why, you know, small group, uh, small group and Sunday school are so important. It, it, it's a little hard to ask a preacher a question uh, in the middle of a message, but when we're in a group setting, uh, we can ask questions and we can support one another in our faith journeys. We can also teach one another from what we have learned in study in our personal experiences. Someone said, you teach a little by what you say, you teach most by what you are. <laughs> uh, fourth one is encouragement. Encouragement teaches the value of our words. Encouragers can be defined as Someone who offers a word of encouragement to someone who has fallen or someone who stumbles. In the Greek, encourage means to comfort, to console, to strengthen. It literally means to offer courage. Now, there are different ways to offer encouragement. You can do it by sending cards or letters. You can do it by phoning someone. You can send an email or post something on social media. And of course, I think the best way is just to say something to someone in person. Take someone out for a coffee or for lunch and just love on them. There's a lot in our world that discourages us. It's, it's hard not to look at the news and and see or hear all the negative that's taking place. But we need those spiritual cheerleaders behind us, encouraging us to stay on the path. Stuart Briscoe uh, tells a story of something that happened to Howard Hendricks when he was in elementary school. Howard had come from a broken family, and he was a problem kid. During his first, first day in fifth grade, the teacher said, Oh, Howard Hendricks, I've heard a lot about you. I understand you're the worst kid in school. 
And of course, that year, Howard did whatever he could to prove her right. When the next year rolled around, his sixth grade teacher said to him, Oh, so you're Howard Hendricks. I've heard you're the worst boy in this school. And then Howard thought, here we go again. But then the teacher continued, and you know what? I don't believe a word of it. And Howard said that year, that woman did everything she could to help him and encourage him and praise his work. She believed in him. Hendricks credits her with changing his life forever. Number five is giving. And of course, we talked about giving last week and about giving back. But there are some who can teach us how to be generous uh, by how they contribute to God's mission. There are some who have the gift of earning well and are able to give back generously to the cause of Christ. Now, we are living in a time when things have never been as expensive as they are today. Inflation is the highest that it's been in in 40 years. And that scares us. You know, we're, we're of course we're worried, we're, we're nervous, we're fearful. But those that can teach us to be generous are the ones that remind us that it's God who is the one who provides. And he will continue to do so for his children. Paul reminded the Corinthian church, and then of course reminding us, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. 2 Corinthians 9.6. The sixth gift listed is this gift of leadership. And those with the gift of leadership can teach us how to get things done. (laughs) They help organize and inspire us to undertake God's work. Uh, In 1 Corinthians 12, they call this the gift of administration. Now, Jesus is our ultimate leader, but we do need men and women to hold places of leadership in the church to help us follow God's plan for the church. Leading can get a little messy. As a group, if we're left without guidance, there's a good chance we'll just end up doing whatever we want and nothing will get accomplished. Leaders help guide us towards transformation by leading us towards the Father and His will. We need those with the gift of leadership to help us as we work to accomplish God's kingdom purposes here on earth. They help prepare us for the adventure that God has in store for us. Lastly, we can learn so much from those with the gift of mercy. In some ways, it's similar to the idea of serving, but it's a trait that gets carried through their whole lives. Those with this gift are the ones who are always first to show compassion to someone hurting or lonely. They somehow seem to be able to forgive more easily than others. Mercy is God's faithful love being lived out through touching one life at a time. Pastor David Dykes tells this story. He says, in one of my churches I served in Alabama, there was a man who was a fairly wealthy businessman, but he did not have the ability to speak publicly. He could never teach a Sunday school class, but I believe he had the gift of mercy. Every time that there was a death in our church family, that man would immediately go over to the home. He couldn't say much because he didn't know what to say, but he would go into the closet of every family member and he would shine all their shoes because he knew they needed them to be shined for the funeral. And then he would wash their cars knowing that those cars were going to be probably have to ride in a funeral procession. That was his gift and what a wonderful gift it was. He did something no one else would think of and helped those families in a very difficult time. Now, no one will have all of these seven gifts. 
Now, nor are they the only gifts that are given to us by the Holy Spirit. But what each of, this, each of these gifts can do is teach others through the use of their gifts. Whether it's through our words or our actions, each of us can teach others what a life captivated by the love of Jesus looks like. We can help our brothers and sisters in Christ learn more about living for Christ and we can be a lesson in living a life that is not about us to the world. Everybody in this room is gifted in some way. And the way you function as a part of the body is to discover your job and then start doing it. And of course, if you haven't done it, then I encourage you to start doing that wholeheartedly. We have so much that we can teach one another. And our mission, that will help our mission in connecting others to God and to each other through the use of those gifts. And when we're working at that level, people cannot help but pay attention to what's going on. Let's pray. Father God, I I thank you Uh, for this lesson on teaching today. And I, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that no one, not one of your children is left without a gift to use to teach others. And so, Lord, there, there may be some today that are saying, I, I don't know if I have a gift I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will point point it out to them. You will remind them that as God's children, they have something they can offer. That they can offer to the family of God and that they can offer uh, to the world. And Lord, I, I pray if there are some of us that have been a little lax in using our gifts, I pray, Holy Spirit, you will encourage us today. You will point out to us how and where we can use our gifts to be a blessing not only to our fellow brothers and sisters, but a blessing to our community, our neighborhood, our city. And so, Lord, continue to use us. Continue to use our gifts to bring glory to your name and to help expand your kingdom to see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We love you, Lord, and we are so grateful. We love and serve you even if we didn't have gifts to offer. And so, Lord, work in us and through us. Use us as your willing instruments, as your willing children to be, uh, to be hope to one another, to be encouragement to one another and to be your gospel message to the world. I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing, take my life and let it be. Spread. 
as you're eating before lunch. <laughs>